So this is where we fill out the thing that we call the green sheet. The green sheet is the basis of finding annuities, also the basis upon which we're going to develop our, uh, develop our proposal, the three options, okay? Whoops. So this is where we fill out your financial picture sheet, okay? Now this is normally green, but we don't like to print it out in green because it's hard to read. And if you are able to set up um, an annuity meeting with our buddy Chris Norris at the central office, they'll help you sell annuities. Um, he's gonna need this and he needs to be able to read it. So that's why we converted it to black and white. But you're gonna find this, your financial picture being referred to as a green sheet, okay? So just so there's no confusion, this is what we're talking about. And so what you do is you fill this out with the client, okay, which, you know, their date of birth, height and weight, address, city, employer, their income, their life policies that they have in place, um, health insurance provider, so on for the wife. And then our homeowner, are they a homeowner? You know, if it's a mortgage protection lead, obviously they are. Get all that filled out. We don't really need auto loans unless you're doing the, uh, the full-blown annuity. You can leave that later. If, you've, if you do open up an opportunity for an annuity, then you want to fill that out. And then some of these other information, um, some of this is required on the actual life insurance application, the net worth. So people freak out about the net worth, and I always just ask it, just round numbers, Joe and Mary. Um, do you know what your net worth is? They say, oh, man, I have no idea. Okay, well, just estimate it because the insurance companies usually ask this question on the application. So just round numbers, if you took everything that you own and sold it at fair market value, and then you paid off all your debts, what do you think you'd have left over? And that'd be your net worth. 100,000, 50,000, doesn't, the insurance company wants to know. And then you get that filled out. And then you put in the medications and any health concerns, medications, the reason for taking the medications. And then this is the sheet that you're gonna develop um, the options, the three options in the fulfillment step, okay? So you get that financial picture thing done. And then you move on to the three, one of the three slides, okay? So remember, this slide is for the general insurance, this slide is for mortgage protection, and this slide's for final expense, okay? So let me tell you how it sounds, okay? So a general insurance lead, let's just pull out a, the new marriage, okay? So the new marriage lead, remember what that looked like, okay? So Jeremy, Joe and Mary, let's find out why this, you know, why this is important. Most people request information from us for one of four reasons, either to pay off the entire mortgage, um, maybe repl replace lost income on the def death of a spouse, pay off final expenses, can maybe cover children's expenses or debt, um, leave a financial legacy to their loved ones. So tell me, when you filled this out, who filled it out? Was it you, Mary, or you, Joe? Oh, you, Mary? Okay. Well, when you're filling this out, tell me what was on your mind. What were you thinking about? Boom. That's where you start the pain finding process on this slide, okay? So let's go to the mortgage protection slide. Okay, this is the lead. Okay, the mortgage protection lead. And so, okay, Joe and Mary, let's talk about what is mortgage protection. Okay, there are different elements of this. Um, it's a lot more than maybe what you thought of. Uh, it, it can help pay your mortgage off if you die. It can, you can choose the whole thing to be paid off or some of it partially paid off so that it can be refinanced. Your surviving spouse can refinance the house. You get to choose the beneficiary. The beneficiary isn't automatically the bank. This program follows you, so if you should refinance or move, you can take this policy with you which is really cool, because you preserve that rate for that whole period of the term. And the coverage stays the same, so it doesn't ever go down, and the premium stays the same, it never goes up. Um, now we have an option called a split plan, and how the split plan works is we can cover half the balance of your mortgage with the full benefit coverage, so no matter how you die, it would pay at least half of it down, half of it off. 
And then the other half we can cover with accidental death. We find a lot of couples find this option a little bit more affordable where they cover about half the mortgage with the full benefit and half if they should die in an accident. Okay. Now the mortgage payment protection is a real popular, real popular one with our seniors where covering the whole, um, covering the entire mortgage at their age and health could be as much as a mortgage payment. So we don't want to, to have our clients have a heart attack after looking at those rates. So there are a lot of affordable options such as mortgage payment protection where we're able to buy time for the client so we can buy, you know, get a policy that, that will give them six months or 12 months of mortgage payments, 18 months, 24 months of mortgage payments. So they can live in the house, um, get every penny of equity out of it when they sell it, but it'll buy your spouse time. Okay, there's no rush to have to sell the house on a short sale or something, and no fear of getting foreclosed on. Okay, and then I, I just stop there. I don't go into disability return of premium really. I just kind of talk about it in general. You know those options. So, Joe and Mary, who um, who was it that filled this out? Was it you, Joe? You, Mary? Mary. Okay, Mary. So when you were filling this out. Take me back to when you're filling this out. What was on your mind? Okay. Boom. And then we're going to start pain finding questions. Okay. Now the last one's final expense. It's about the easiest one that we ever do. Okay. And so we explain, okay, so what is final expense? Well, you know, it's more than just what you think. It's more than a funeral and all expenses, you know, and, and you know that this can be expensive. Like, have you ever been involved in planning a funeral? And for the ones that say, oh, yeah, so how much did that cost? Oh, that was, man, it was well over $20,000. Wow, really? Yep. So you get them to, you know, understand it by them being involved in it, okay? Typically on a final expense, you're usually sitting down with the senior anyway, so they are probably involved in their own parents' funeral, okay? So that's a very effective question. Um, the whole purpose, Joe and Mary, between, behind final expense is that it'll make sure that there's no financial burden on your family. And I'm sure that's why you sent this in. You didn't want financial burden on your family. Uh, this coverage is permanent. It will never end as long as you make your premiums. If you qualify, your net rate never increases and your premium, um, benefits never decrease. A lot of people use final expense for Social Security income replacement. So they'll by policies that'll help out make the transition from the household income getting cut down um, because the other spouse died, okay? So, final expense, that's the final expense. So, who, who filled this out? Was it you, Mary, you, Joe? You, Mary? Okay, Mary. When you're filling this out, tell me what was on your mind, what was on your heart when you were filling this out. Boom, and you start the pain finding process, okay? And that's sort of how you, get into it, okay? So let's kind of pretend it's a mortgage protection. And so let's explain pain finding, okay? Pain finding is a funnel, okay? And when you ask questions like, what was on your mind, what was on your, on your heart, you're gonna start out with a logical answer, okay? And we don't want to them to stay in the logical mode, we want them to get into the emotional mode, the emotional reasons why they need this, okay? And this is finding out the need. Do they really need this? And so pain finding st starts with the first question, what was on your mind, what was on your heart? They're gonna say something, well, we're just kind of interested in how much this cost. That's very much a logical answer, okay? Then you go to the next question, which is, well, you know, we're gonna get to the cost soon enough, let me ask you this, what did you want this policy to do for you, okay? What did you want this policy to do for you? Well, we were, you know, we just wanna make sure that the kids aren't burdened um, with the house, that, you know, the, that, you know, if I die, that my husband's taken care of, or if he dies, that, you know, I still can afford to stay in the house. Oh, okay. So tell me what would happen if, you know, we didn't take care of this tonight and Joe tomorrow dies of a heart attack. What are you going to do? 
Okay, then you start drilling down to where we want to get to the emotional reason why they really need this. And you got to ask 10 questions. You got to be willing to ask 10 questions. And the questions are very simple once you start learning how to probe and drill down. And this just really drill down, drill down, drill down, asking questions just generally. So tell me more about that, okay? It's a great way. So tell me more about that. What does that mean to you? Define words. One of the best ways of finding pain is help them define vague terms, wishy-washy words, I call them. So when you ask them, so what happens? Joe dies tomorrow. Describe what happens to you. Oh, man, it's going to be hard financially. So what does hard mean? Okay, get them to define it. And that's how you can continue to ask questions where you get to the emotional pain. So tell me what does hard mean to you? Oh, man. Well, Joe, he makes like 75% of the income. Oh, he does? So you're going to only live on 25% of your income? See, and you don't ever tell them anything. Don't tell. Selling is not telling. Selling is asking questions so that they tell you how hard it's going to be. You're not putting words in their mouth. People hate when a salesperson puts words in the client's mouth. See, because when you start telling them how they should feel, then they got to determine that they should believe you and what are your motivations behind making that statement, right? Instead of pulling out the answers from them, when you pull the answers out from them, then they don't ever object to what they say, right? People don't object to themselves. You know what I mean? So the most powerful pain finding is getting them to realize their situation by asking those drill down questions. And the only way you get good at it is practicing. Getting people to define vague words. You focus on that, you'll be great at pain finding. Okay. So you're going to get them to the point where um, you really felt good that you got them down to the emotional reason. They say the words like yeah, they use word, emotional words like, yeah, we're just really worried what would happen when Joe dies and, you know, and the kids. Oh, yeah, you mean Sammy, Bridget, and Martha? Yeah, what's going to happen to them? And once you get it, like, to the ultimate where you feel, remember, that bon rapport where you start feeling that tension, that sick feeling in your stomach, because it's going to manifest itself by that, sick feeling in your stomach, then you know you got him in the right place. Then you turn to, to hero Joe <laughs> and you say, hey, Joe, so how does that make you feel that Mary, Martha, Bridget, and Sammy have to go through all that crap? Oh, man, it doesn't feel very good. Right. Well, we're, you know, that's, we're not going to, we're not going to let that happen, right? Right. <laughs> that's why I'm here. So that's when you go, the transition from pain funding to death front contract is, that's why I'm here. I'm going to make sure that never happens to Mary, Martha, Bridget, and Sammy. Okay? Boom. You're done. You're done with pain finding. Easy peasy, man. I tell you, most people do not take care of clients because they don't do the first two. The first two are the most important foundational parts of your appointment. If you don't get these done, then nothing good's going to happen, man. You're going to get to think about it. You're going to get all the stuff that blows up a, a sale, okay?